guys, let's get started in creating a trim texture. So what I'm going to do right now is show you guys how to create a trim texture. So here I have a 3D concept art from a concept art, 3D environment art by Dave Hanson. So shout out to Dave Hanson. And this artwork is in a game of God of War. And I'm going to sort of show you guys how do I create a trim texture based on of this screenshot from the game, which is this environment made by Dave Hanson, who's an environment artist. Very cool work. Check him out. So I have a tutorial, uh, my first time creating a tutorial online for a trim texture. And you'll see how we create a trim texture from scratch and things we need to follow and things we don't need to follow. So here goes nothing. Alright. Um, so to get started, the first thing that you guys need to do is to plan based on concept art. Now, because this is a 3D model, it's much more easier to um, use this as a reference. Now, concept art is much more difficult because it's more concept art -y or concept art-ish. Uh, 3D environment is more simplified and you more concrete to see information. Okay, concrete. Okay, uh, which okay around. All right. So, so to get started, uh, the first thing that we need to do is usually to plan, plan the stage, plan uh, what you guys need to make and what you guys need to do. So what I have over here is I already have a layout of what I planned and how many assets do I actually need, how many assets are repeated. But uh, I just go through this process again. Um, but before that, um, to understand trim textures, um, there needs to be an understanding for basic tileable textures uh, and what exactly are trim textures and how do they work. Um, so there are two types of so-called two types, maybe three different types of textures that you guys can uh, have a look. So, namely, the first one being, um, so the first one being, let me do this, a trim texture. Sorry, that's the third one. And the first one being a tileable texture, both horizontally and vertically. Now, what do I mean by that? So. First, a tileable texture, which is both horizontal and vertical tiling. Okay. Um, then we have another type of textures that are used heavily in environments, which are known as decals. Uh, which, in other words, you can understand decals as stamps. Uh, they generally come with alpha and alpha maps in it diffuse all the, uh, the other PBR materials according with it that goes along with it uh, and third one which is a combination of both of these is your trim texture okay so I'll be going through trim textures and how you guys can make them um, so tileable textures are nothing but horizontally and vertically tile so in, in general uh, generally speaking, tileables are, so let's say the first type over here, so let's say if we have a tileable texture, they are generally tiling both uh, vertically as well as horizontally, right? And they basically repeat is what I mean, right? So let's say if there was a grid pattern, right? This grid pattern would repeat horizontally and vertically, right? Both, okay? The second type that you guys usually see are called decals. Now decals are generally stamps of whether you have blood falling down, or whether you have a logo, right? whether you have hand paint texture right? with an alpha map attached to it, or whether you have uh, any sort of blood splash or any sort of design that you guys are going with. Um, Generally, decals work with alphas and they sort of blend them together. I would generally name call them as stamps. Uh, the third part, the third type of textures that we generally use for environments, 
are called as trim textures. So generally trim textures are a combination of both. So as you could guess, um, you can only have any one tiling. So, so that means it's either a horizontal or vertical. You cannot get both. Right? So that means um, if there was a horizontal tiling, it would look like this. And generally, it would be across the surface. Um, that's basically what trim textures are. They are a combination of either horizontal or vertical tile textures, plus with certain colors, certain types of stamps. Right? So in, in general, maybe you'll have, uh, if it's a sewage system, you know, they'll generally have the, the concrete next to it. Uh, if they have a sewer sort of design, um, so that there's a cage to open it up, right? and they will sort of have those uh, stamps for them. Right? And uh, generally, these also come with alpha maps as well as um, some tileable stuff. Okay. Now, of course, there are multiple ways that you guys can block it out, uh, depending on your concept part. That means this sort of planning is really based on the artist themselves. Uh, there's no one way of rearranging or arranging, you know, any sort of texture that you guys want. Uh, it really depends on the artist, and it also depends on the concept art. Okay. Um, so that's basically the three different types of textures that you know people use generally in an environment. Um, these are heavily used in terms of environments, uh, much more than the usual process of uh, modeling to UV modeling with topo UVs and texturing process right uh, so I'll just be going through trim textures because uh, there are very few tutorials out there that actually show you guys how to plan things out so taking the chance to plan it out for um, based on a concept art slash 3d model that's done by someone else all right so yeah it's just kind of uh, darken it out um, so how I would like to break down this is namely First thing is, based on this environment, I'll try to see how many things can I repeat in this environment. Okay. Uh, now this needs some prior knowledge to tileables, um, some prior knowledge to modeling, texturing, breaking, v top or UVs, uh, how UV, how they work, and uh, all those kind of stuff. Because trims do need that kind of knowledge. Okay. Uh, so to start off first, uh, as you can see early on, I did uh, plan it out. I came up with uh, two conclusions. I'll end up with one trim and uh, two four-way texture, which is, in other words, two tileable textures, both horizontally and uh, vertically. All right. Um, so how how I like to play this out is I, I generally sort of see in my environment uh, what are the most common things that are repeated. All right. So in this case, uh, I can see a couple of designs. Uh, so the first thing I see is uh, well. One of the first things that I see are these uh, little cubes, right? These uh, squarish cubes, right? So I sort of, you know, label it across like this. Okay. Now, as we can see, even in environments like this, uh, these are sort of repeated. Okay. Now it also depends on us what we want to do and what's our budget and uh, our map size and uh, you know what our boss tells us to do. Um, you know the some specifications uh, result in either repeating just one object or repeating two different types of objects right or with a different texture to it uh, so all these things really depend on specifications so this sort of thing uh, trims do need a lot of back and forth with the artists with the game artists programmers and all those kind of people uh, all those kind of uh, stuff right uh, so i'm just sort of generalizing things how i would sort of break down a trim texture so it really depends on the specifications that you guys get before you create an environment um, and it really depends on that of course there are multiple ways to optimize it but for now uh, you know I'll keep it things simple okay so first things first I see these kind of designs now uh, so I'll definitely make uh, two different sets right so one into two right that means I'll, in the end I'll sort of make these two squares um, that will be repeated multiple times and I'll make two variations of it. So I'm marking one the first item two variations of it Okay, uh, another thing I'll see is um, You have these rocks over here, right? So I have you have you can see these rocks and you can sort of Close close up on them and you can see okay. Maybe what I'll have is I'll have uh, This is number two. I'll call them my big 
you know, tolerable rocks. Okay, uh, so I'll have one big, one medium. Okay, um, so these will be the two rocks that we have right, in general. Okay, and uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, let's let's see some gold railings, right? Um, so what I have over here is I'll take these railings and let's say this will be number four. Now of course this is one into two, uh, and I'm just sort of laying out not that accurately, but sort of what are the different types or different assets in my environment. Okay, so this is gold, right? And of course I'll have three different types of gold variation. So namely you can I can sort of see okay this is maybe gold one. Right, and I'll call this tuggable because this is repeated all the way from there to there. So this has to be tuggable. All right. So I have to make sure that in my trim, this is 100% tuggable. Okay. Um, so I can see. Okay, maybe this and this is exactly the same. So I'll use it, the same thing. All right. Uh, then maybe depending on specifications, we can see there are two more types of gold. Right. Maybe there's one over here, uh, and there's one over here. Right, so what I'll do is I'll make three variations of this goal. Right, so I have goal number one, right, and this is five and six. Uh, I mean, you can call it as five, and I'll have goal into two variations. Okay, now um, to be precise, uh, we are not actually following any sort of numbers. I'm just sort of laying it out as to what different types of you know goal materials are there. Right. Uh, when it comes to these sort of objects, um, using tileable textures are pretty useful. Right? Imagining modeling this out by yourself, right? uh, this will take so much, of, a lot of UV space, uh, a lot of baking, a lot of things will go into this, so that's why it's much more easier to use a tileable texture for this. Right? So I'll use two different types of gold. One is for the strips over here that we see, which is also tileable, and one I'll make another strip which is tileable. Right. So in total what I get is three different types of gold, right? two different types of gold plates and maybe two different types of rocks, one big rocks and some mid rocks. Okay. Um, ignore these numbers, these numbers are just they're laying it out by right, this should be one and two, so just you know, skip that, uh, just forgive me for that. Alright, um, so you can see we can use these rocks uh, in multiple place, places, both in the circular pattern, so we won't need more than two. Right, two should be enough if we look, if we place it nicely. Uh, what else we see is uh, we see these uh, these sort of textures, right? And these textures I would use. Of course, even though this is a trim, um, I'm sorting. I'm sort of opening up to the tileable option in this case, right? Um, so using a tileable texture, I'm going to use uh, two tileable textures that's over here, both horizontally and vertically, that's being tiled, right? Um, so what I have over here is this gold pattern, right? So let's say this is number seven. Um, and let's say this is number seven, and this will be one tile. Okay, tile number one will be this gold pattern, and tile number two will be this rock, right? So now there are two options I can go with. I can see there are cracks in this rock. Now you can see there are plain rocks. Now I can go in more advanced and I can sort of split these guys out separately so that in Unreal Engine we can separate them. But uh, for now, I can later on separate, I can always separate them out and always combine them. I can just keep in mind that hey, you know, I'm just going to make a rock tileable texture. And if I really want to split it later on, then this will be number eight. If I really want to split it later on, I can make two of them, one with cracks and one without cracks, so that I can use blending options in Unreal Engine, either by Vertex Paint or by masking, to sort of create these cracks um, on top of it, right? Uh, or in specific areas where I want, okay? So, you know, these are things that you need to know before in advance. Um, so definitely before you guys attempt to um, do trims, I would highly recommend you guys to focus on tileables, then use decals, and then, then move on to trims. Okay, uh, so I have two tileables, so that's tile, tileable, same thing, um, right? Um, so that should be enough for the entire environment, the rest is all based on geometry, right? 
Now, of course, there's this piece over here that I included inside my trim. So how I divided this is one, of course, I could do this better, I think. So one will be this, this railing at the end, right? So that will be the border, right? So there's one border or the base, the base border, right? Um, so we can think about that. Uh, there's this one center piece. So this one is just repeated on all four sides of this cube looking shape. And then we have another piece over here, which is just a strip of, you know, circular patterns uh, around this bowl. Right. And the rest we can, you know, just use any fill textures or some other textures that we can use. Let's see, here we have one, two, and three different types. And this we will use in our trim textures. Right. So we sort of use them as best as we can to sort of fill up our trim texture. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think that should be it. So roughly we are making a total of... Um, Let's see. So usually I like to sort of uh, lay out my conclusion at the end, uh, so that you know it's more clear, it's more concrete, based on whatever I plan so far, and how many things I plan to do. Right. So in general, what I end up with is uh, I end up with a three different types of gold tileable textures. All right. So I can see there's one, two, and three different types of gold. All right. Um, so I'll have three types of repeated gold right both horizontally repeated gold right so h for horizontally repeated and this will be a gold uh, tileable texture right uh, which will follow the pbr materials okay um so i'll just call this this will be my trim my plan sheet my plan okay so three types horizontally gold uh, then i may see that we have um what else? We have some rocks, right? So we have big rocks, mid rocks over here. And uh, so we'll have two, let's change the color a bit. Right? So we have two types of horizontally tile rocks. Now, in this case, because they're rocks, even though they are tile, uh, just think, of, just make sure that, you know, there is some border edge over here, right? So you guys must focus on this edge. Right, so I just take note that in my future, I have to make sure that there are these uh, sort of edgeware details for my rocks. Okay, so I'll just take note of that uh, while I'm creating this plan for mine. Okay, um, let's, let's go on. Okay. Okay, uh, other than this, what we have is, so gold, we finished up with the rocks, and now we need these two triangle looking shapes, right? So then we have, let's change the color again, right? So then we have two triangle, two triangles, I'll just call them triangles because they sort of represent a triangle, right? Um, so two triangles, cubes, you can call them cubes, you can call them rectangles, whatever you want to call them based on a design. All right, um, so we have this, we have the rocks, we have the three gold types. Um, I'll get to the tileable later on, right? Um, these tileables I'll get to later on. I just want to set up my trim sheet as fast as I can, all right? And then we have uh, this sort of more object, and this is just one of each, so one of these uh, sort of patterns. Uh, I did miss out one thing over here where, uh, as you can see, there are some kind of design shapes over here. So I did include, uh, I'll just call it design 01 and design 02, D02, right? So this is like a half moon, like a half moon shape sort of design. And this one is like a full moon shape sort of design, right? So I'll keep that in mind later on, okay? Uh, we also have a tileable rock texture over here, right? So that will add up to my rock as well. So, I think in the end, uh, I still use three different types of rocks, right? Uh, based on my model and my concept art, or my environment art reference. Now, of course, it's much more easier to use 3D models to start off with trim textures because it's much more clear and obvious to see as compared to concept art. So, I highly encourage you guys, if you guys want to practice trims, make sure you use a 3D model reference, right? As, as a reference, right? Um, so we have two triangles, 
Uh, now we have all these things that are there for this asset. So we have, uh, you can say we have three rocks. We have two designs, right? Right, two designs. One is a half moon, and one is a full moon kind of design over there. Um, we have a centerpiece, so we're running our space over here. So let's write that. We have a centerpiece. And then we have uh, this belt looking object over there, right? So then we have this, this, uh, this change color, that's more obvious. Belt with, um, I just sort of draw it out over here. Um, this, this belt that goes around and this is a tile bowl with some uh, dots in, a, in between, maybe like uh, screws or some, uh, some I don't know, some metal objects or metal parts that are coming out, you know, kind of extruded, right? Uh, and this will be my my plan so far, right? So, sort of broke it down into these different types, right? So, if I see uh, over here, right, I sort of have this, uh, let me just put this on a new layer. Oops. Okay, so I have the sort of uh, plan that I made, right? Um, and now this is basically it, right? Uh, as long as you know what you need, uh, and you know, then it comes down to the specifications as to what can you cheat, what can you not cheat with. Um, one, once you sort of you know draw, broadly lay this out, right? Then it depends on the specifications based on the specifications um, that you guys will you know either minus or add some. These, these parts over here, right? Now, right now, based on my specifications, I don't have any, right? We're just gonna work sort of balance, sort of uh, not being super optimized at this point, but we'll still try to keep it optimized as best as we can. Right? So I'm gonna use, um, so of course I plan it out uh, in Maya, page one, but just to draw it out, uh, let's say if this was uh, a sort of, uh, square texture that we have um, let's say three different types of gold so what I would do is in my texture uh, of course in my next next video tutorial uh, I'll show you guys this um, how I planned it and how I made it inside Maya but generally what I'm trying to say is um, based on these three different types you have uh, tileables so these are horizontal tile um, this is also horizontal tile Okay, so we draw the horizontal tile ones first. Now it doesn't matter doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or vertically tile. The result is the same, but I prefer horizontally tile. It's more it looks nicer. That'd be my reasoning. Yeah, it looks nicer. Wow, nice. Yeah. Right. So I have these three different gold pieces. Right. So I'll just make one, two, and three different parts. Right. One, two, and three. Okay. This will be my gold. Right, so this is how I'll divide it in my trim texture sheet. Right, so I have finished up my goal. Then I'll have these three different rocks. Right, so one, the first two rocks will be, uh, one will be a medium, one will be a big, and the other one will be a medium slash small details uh, for rocks. Right, right sort of damaged rocks, but you know, pretty nice. Um, I'll come back to the rectangle. I'll come back. To the designs first I'll do all the horizontally tall ones and then I have the belt which is also sort of uh, around here which is also semi rockish right so this sort of you know the diameter sorry not the diameter but the distance really depends on the size and this ratio of your asset right so of course based on reference you would check the ratios right now you know it's sort of planning things out right so this will be the belt right and I think, oh yeah, there are three different types of rocks, so I missed one. So I should, let me undo that. And then I have the third one, which is uh, the small type, I'll call it the small details. Okay, uh, I missed out the belt, and then I have the belt. Okay. Um, Okay, so these are the horizontally tall ones. Okay, 
Now of course I think I need a bit more space. Right, if this was a square, the square would be this long, this big. So just take it a bit more down. Roughly that's a square. It doesn't matter at this point. Okay. Um, so after I have the belt, then I'll go with. Um, so I finished up the belt. I finished up these parts over here. Okay. Uh, now I have these two two triangles, two designs in one centerpiece. Okay. So how do I break that down? Uh, so based on the design, uh, based on the design is roughly a square. Right. So I'll just take a different color. Um, so let's say the centerpiece, which is this one. Right. Uh, I'll do. I'll just do this sort of piece over here. Right. Sort of a happy face, happy smile. Right. So that'll be my centerpiece later on. Right? Uh, after I have that. Uh, I'll jump to the two triangles. Right? So two, two triangles are roughly pretty thin. Right? So they're sort of like this. Right? And then I have the two designs that are there. Right? One half moon, one uh, full moon kind of design. And I'll break that down into two different parts. Right? So I have the space over here. So I'll use this as much as I can. This will come with an alpha because it will come with transparency because the the texture uh, is sort of there's these you know these two lines over here this is like a half moon and there's another line and then two lines over here is like a full moon kind of thing and then these two lines right? so if I break down my trim texture based on my plan based on my reference right and of course based on specifications uh, this will result in you know, either a 1k map, uh, either a 1k or a 2k or a 4k map, really depends on uh, the specifications um, for the project. Right? Uh, and of course there are a lot of things to consider within this uh, within the specifications, so it's not that easy. But uh, after a certain practice, you, know, you guys can get used to this sort of thing. Right? So, that covers up the planning stage for um, for the trim textures, right? Uh, the only thing that's left to do is, you know, take this to Maya or any other 3D application and sort of 3D it out, right? And later on after Maya, we'll take it to ZBrush, right? And after ZBrush, we will sort of take it to back to Maya um, or Substance Painter directly to to bake the textures out and then take it back to Maya for the layout process All right? so that we test it out, uh, we see how things work uh, we check our textures, we check our layout and then from the layout, so forgive me for this weird drawing then we take it to the Unreal Engine now, of course some people will choose to lay out uh, in Unreal Engine itself but since I'm testing things out, I would lay out in Maya right? and then take it directly to Unreal Engine so you can lay out in Unreal Engine uh, it is recommended, but for this project, I'll use Maya for my layout process. It's much more easier, and I can change the UVs and stuff, which I have to. I cannot change it in Unreal Engine. Okay, so that's my process. Um, hopefully, this helps for the planning stage for trims. So, based on the design, preferably choose a 3D model, uh, much more easier to pick from. Right, uh, more concrete, more clear as compared to a concept art. Once you guys get used to it. I would say then you know then try out concept art, right? That would be my advice. Okay, uh, but this does need some understanding for tileable uh, decals and trims are basically a combination of both, right? So this does do need some prior knowledge from for tileables and some decals that you guys can make. Um, so it all comes from there. Okay, so that's just a quick recap. Uh, this you guys do need some tileables. And some decal experience before you guys move on to trims is my suggestion uh, but nevertheless you guys can always plan it out um, be more organized uh, try to be picky I would say uh, as much as you guys can okay so that uh, you know you can break down the environment into different parts which things are repeated which things are not and in the end we'll use geometry uh, with these tileable textures right, as a main base okay so this is our conclusion 
uh, plan. Right, so we have three, four, five, six, roughly six different types, and then uh, we sort of lay them out like this in our map. Okay, and after that we have Maya, two zebra, two substance, so lay up and on here. Okay. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, um, this helps you guys plan things out. And I'll see you next time, the next video. Alright, see you. Bye bye.